Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to the course code ENG 455, lecture number 19. Today we are going to continue with pragmatics that we started in our previous lecture. So before that, we should see, we would like to see what we have done so far about uh, pragmatics. With a relation to pragmatics, we, we in our last, last lecture, we define what pragmatics is, that pragmatics is actually the study of intended meanings of speaker. The word intended is important. It's not just the meanings of uh, utterances, just like in semantics, but it is the intended meanings of speaker. What the, the, what the speaker is saying is not important, rather what is speaker trying to say what is meant or by certain utterances and 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 uh, if their meanings are not clear from their word level meanings then then we have to study a pragmatic view of that uh, trances and usually such trances we can see uh, that we can understand them in relation to the context so in pragmatic study the context is very much important now these contexts can be both linguistic context or it sometimes it can be the situational context or physical context or non-linguistic context. The linguistic context refers to the words inside the utterances accompanying other words and making the meaning of particular words clear. For example, stop, the pupils are crossing the road. Now the pupils here definitely crossing the road and stop. Definitely these are not the pupils which is meant by the iris of my eye. These are the pupils which is meant by the students. Now same word has two meanings but the words inside the utterances, the other words inside the utterances are making the meaning of the word pupil clear. So, so, so this is the linguistic context. Similarly, we can see this if we have a, a, outside a school, we have a board and written over here, be caution, pupils are there. Now what pupils? Definitely again, not the pupils of my, the school building, the context, the physical context is making clear that these are the students. So this way the physical context or the um, situational context as well as the linguistic context helps us to determine the meanings of language or utterances uh, at, um, at a pragmatic level. And we talked about the importance of context that definitely to understand the uh, meanings uh, we need to understand the we need to get the context and we with that uh, with that regard we gave I gave you a lot of examples how context is important and then where we left in our previous lecture that we started with the theories inside the pragmatics I mentioned there are the four theories in pragmatics but I mean because of the shortage of time we could do only with one theory uh, related to pragmatics that was a speech act theory what was speech act theory that actually the language it it uh, it uh, uh, it asks us to do something language is accompanied by certain physical or verbal acts so language is used to act this was the basic stance of language a speech act theory and then we uh, studied about different types of speech acts and the uh, value of context in that speech um, acts and mean uh, how these uh, what are the conditions for that speech acts for example if I make it quickly to uh, to uh, recap what it was for example open the window if you remember open the window is a type of command and this is the utterance that as a return I want you to do something I want a physical action and sometimes this kind of act is indirect speech act where I want you to do something and so the language is not the simple language means saying something but rather I want you to do something so language is used to do certain things similarly sometimes I do not want you to do a physical action rather a, a, a verbal action is required what is your name? So I want you to respond to me. I want to give me a response and, and tell me what is your name. So I want a verbal uh, mean act. So this way the language it is, uh, it is used to act. And this act can be any form in verbal or uh, in verbal or physical form. That was all about the speech act theory.
Now today we will continue with the remaining theories of mathematics. So today's lecture is first um, based on the theories which we are we left with that we will continue with the relevance theory, the cooperation theory and the argumentation theory. And then finally we will move towards the pragmatics and analysis. How and, and, and over here we have two categories, one the pragmatic analysis itself and the second the link of pragmatics with the discourse analysis. So let's start with the theories. The first theory is relevance theory. Now what is relevance theory? According to the relevance theory, meaning is not merely a matter of decoding grammar. I mean you, are, you, you have a structural pattern for a sentence. But language is not about the structure and pattern. De definitely, to make a good sentence, we need grammatical rules. But language is not only about the grammatical rules. The like grammatical rules fall into the category of syntax. Language is more than that. Language is about communication. It is also a matter of knowing which of the many inferences that one can draw from an utterance uh, are relevant. I mean you say something and out of your single utterance I can derive so many other things. Because the, those other things they are relevant to the thing that you have said. So this way the, the utterances they are relevant. You, you, as you say one thing but I assume so many things and that assumptions that they are have relevance with, uh, with what you said. So relevance theory explains, uh, to, uh, talks about the relevance of the, um, relevance of the speech. That how to understand the meanings we need to look for the relevancy of these different items. It is actually the matter deeply tied to context, point of view and a culture. Yes, what you say, what you are saying according to your context. Sometimes it happens that you say something and according to your context it is correct. But according to my context it is wrong. So what's about that? So this way it means you, whatever you are saying, whatever you are uttering, the words you are uttering are correct, we are relevant to your context. But they are not relevant to my current context. Similarly, they vary from culture to culture. Maybe you are saying something which is right from your culture. For example, in a Christian culture, the drinking of wine is allowed. So if somebody asks me, please can you pass me the wine? It's, cr it's correct. Because according to his context, according to his culture, the words, the tenses are meaningful. But according to my culture, according to my context, this is something mean uh, not um, uh, not a good uh, not a good uh, wait, uh, not a good uh, something not I cannot perform a speech act. I cannot do anything because the things are not relevant to my culture. So this way, the relevancy talks about the relevance of utterance with the culture, with the context, and with the point of view of the speaker. So this is what a relevance theory is. The relevance theory is about pragmatic nature of utterances. Now, for example, sentence one that is get, given over here may have multiple meanings. Look at all these meanings given below. They are all meanings that are related to the sentence number one. What does it mean? Try to fill it in the blanks. Now, no, how you are you are going to do it? For example, sentence number one. Lung cancer death rates are clearly associated with increase in smoking. This is my sentence. Now with that sentence, so many things are related. Now look at all sentences below from A to G. And some way you can pre fill the blanks as well. Increase smoking. Increase smoking means the people smoke more. I mean, if you are a smoker, you smoke more. I mean, you, you consume more uh, packets of cigarettes. And if it is increased smoking, I can have another meaning. It means more people smoke. Means the number of smokers are increasing. The quantity of smoking is not increasing, increasing. Rather, the number of smokers are increasing. So, increased smoking, again, it is relevant to the context of sentence one. Then how what how you are going to define increased smoking? According to this context, 
which meaning would be more uh, relevant people smoke more or most people smoke you have to make a relevancy then D the same people are smoking and dying in the people who are smoking they are only dying because of the lungs cancer not the other people the people smoking and dying are not all dash smokers mean mean uh, on one side you can say the lung cancer because it is caused by the smoking but on the other hand the relevancy is that the people the other people also die not only the smokers die yes the number of smokers are in great in number who die because of the lung cancer but beside those number of smokers there could be other people who can die with with because of that lung cancer and they get lung cancer because of some other reasons some uh, because like a polluted environment it can be a one reason then the situation being talked about is real now because now give me a reason that the situation is a real situation if I talk about the real life situation then what and if the situation being talked about is hypothetical mean the person researcher or the person who said sentence number one is just giving a hypothesis then I'm not going to accept it as clearly if it is about the real situation yes I'm going to take it as correct but if it is a hypothesis uh, then I am concerned about its relevancy because we need to prove it so this way the things said one thing but so many things are in relation to that thing so relevance theory explains the relevance of the context and the culture and the, mm, the point of view uh, uh, with respect to the uh, conversation or with respect to the speech by, uh, by, uh, either verbal or written then next we have the cooperation theory as the main name makes it clear cooperation theory it talks about the cooperation the in way in which people are mean they are they are cooperating with, with with each other and when they are doing conversations they, they when they make conversations they, they cooperate with each other for example if I'm talking uh, if two people are talking in the market the person A where are you going the person B I'm going to market person A what do you want to buy person B I want to buy some vegetables now no look at this the P, person A and B they are actually cooperating with each other they are answering each other whatever the question uh, person A is asking the question B is answering if he is not cooperating he can okay person A is asking question and person B is moving beyond is going there not uh, not interested so but in actual situations in our real life we cooperate somebody asks me something I'm, I, even I don't know the person I'm going on a road and somebody asks me what is the time I will pause maybe if I have time I will stand and I will give uh, I tell him the time what the time exactly is so this way we need to uh, cooperate while conversing with each other we need to give turns to each other the turn taking phenomena is actually related to this cooperation theory because we give turns because we cooperate with each other if this cooperation is not there then that conversation it, it can become meaningless it cannot uh, it can go beyond the scope of the uh, subject or we go it can go beyond the subject or the topic as well so this way the cooperation is very much important while conversing now with respect to cooperation theory there were certain maxims that were proposed by Paul Grice another ling famous linguist in the field of uh, ling uh, in the field of pragmatics Paul Grice he actually proposed four maxims of cooperation that we we need to cooperate at four levels with respect to quantity with respect to quality with respect to relevance and with respect to manner and all these maxims they make our conversation uh, uh, they create the element of cooperation in our conversation the quantity element asks you that gives the quantity of information that is required to not go beyond that the, quant uh, the maximum of quality explains that be truthful, be, re be mean whatever is demanded, tell it honestly. And then relevance, be relevant to what is asked or what is demanded.
and finally with respect to manner it means to be clear whatever you are saying you have to say it in a proper manner in a proper way let's have an explanation for these maxims again the brief overview of these maxim is that the maxim of quantity the be only as informative as it is required mean only give the answer what is what is required do not go beyond that maxim of quality say only what you believe to be true be honest be truthful while communicating while conversing the maxims of relation be relevant give answer to uh, to a question what is being asked do not go beyond that and be the maximum of manner asks you to be to be politeful to be brief to be clear to be uh, in to to say some things in order and to avoid obscurity and ambiguity so these four maxims they they tend to stay together to create cooperation now uh, let me give you some examples for these maxims maxims of quantity make your contribution as informative as required for the current purposes of the exchange as defined earlier as well it means that whatever is demanded do not make your contribution more informative than is required for example where is sara our maid is the answer the question is where is sara the answer our maid is on the leave today uh, um, she is not feeling well today i think she is suffering from the fever uh, so because of her absence there were lot of things that were uh, that were supposed to do in the kitchen and in the home like the washing stuff like the cleaning stuff like the ironing stuff and the cooking stuff and and uh, i am not only i am not because the good cook so sara was supposed to cook and she is in the kitchen and she is uh, cooking a meal um, uh, for the kids and for me as well and because i believe she is not that much good cook as sara as uh, my maid is but still i have to be at that because my maid is absent now look at the question and look at the answer do you think according to the quantity mean the the person who was asking the question where is sara just i uh, wanted to know where sara is the according to the maxim of quantity the best answer is the sara is in the kitchen this is this is what is required but but adding so many informations uh, t- telling so many things to to the person a this is totally violation of maxim of quantity so the maximum of quantity requires you to give information the amount of information that is required do not give extra information or even do not give the less information so this way you have to be to have to quantize your amount of information according to the, to what is demanded this is this is the one of the most important maximum of cooperation another maxim of our cooperation is maximum of quality now what is maximum quality is that try to make your contribution one that is truth answer in that what you know truthfully do not if you do not know answer just say excuse me i do not know that is more better way to then to manipulate things than to try to tell things which you do not know which you do not know exactly and if, uh, similarly this maxim it also stress that do not say what you believe to be false I mean you know that there is something which is false and and and, and you know uh, where is sara for example i give you same example where is sara the answer is and now you do not know where sara is and but still you are telling him um i think sara is uh, 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 upstairs now this is totally the violation of maximum of quality because i do not know exactly where she is but still i am answering i know i am giving the other person a wrong answer a false answer and this is actually the violation of maximum of quality which asks you that do not um, tell the false answer do not say which you lack and adequate evidence 
but you do not know and you do not but still you want to answer if in such call in such ways if you do not know the answer just tell them that okay sorry i do not know this would be more better than to provide the other person with a wrong answer with a false answer this is what maximum of quality says then maximum of relevance maximum of relevance again be relevant to what is asked for example well how do i look your shoes are nice now the person is demanding you to tell her or him that how is he is or she is looking overall but the answer be is i mean not relevant to the question just focusing on other things okay your shoes are nice I mean the person b is not not relevant to what is said what is being asked but the maximum of, and this is again the violation of maximum of relevance according to maximum of relevance you need to be answer the your answer need it to be relevant to what is being asked if you want to create an atmosphere of cooperation then you should be relevant your answers uh, your uh, your suggestions or everything whatever you say should be relevant to the, to what is being asked should be relevant to the topic for example i have seen so many essays in my mean as a career in my career as a teacher i have seen essays with the topic of the essay something and be below the things that they are written something about something different the topic is what causes the environmental pollution the answer is about the other types of pollution and the telling me the giving me the types of pollution and uh, and um, and uh, what pollution can do how we can control pollution now look what is the topic the causes now i am just foc- i am asking what the causes why the irrelevant things are there so this way the relevancy the manner of re- relevancy asks you to be relevant uh, with what is being asked or with with being what is demanded next is maximum of manner maximum manner all demands you that when you say certain things you should be brief you should be clear and you should be orderly mean say the response in such a way that everything is brief and clear and orderly to to the per- other person now look at the example a does your dog bite b no a bend down to stroke it and gets bitten Oh you said your dog doesn't bite b that isn't my dog I mean again again the way of saying things b if somebody a is asking for you something tell him no okay you should be brief but tell him that this is my dog doesn't but it is not my dog this is the brief correct ordered answer that my dog doesn't but this is not my dog brief clear order everything is there so this way we need to to follow these maxims of cooperation for establishing a healthy a good conversation a cooperative sort of co- conversation between the discourses between the actual discourses the verbal discourses and as well as between the uh, written discourses now infringing a maxim what happens when we violate a maximum according to grice Fail, when we fail to observe a maximum because of their imperfect linguistic performance for example a child or a foreigner learner uh, nervousness or i mean uh, uh, we are not we have problems we have some a certain impairment problems we have we are excited and we are not hearing what the other person is saying or we have a lack of responsibility on the part of speaking of a speaker so because of these phenomena we usually tend to violate these maxims of cooperation for example now look at this article uh, these thing bush said kids would not um, um uh, routinely attend cabinet meetings but would take part in sessions where intelligence was necessary for making decisions again infringing maximum how does these things could be a clear to a child if, if, if somebody uh, asks you to do do why bush want first pa- I mean uh, kids want participate and from where you have got the information so these these things by by violating the maxims of corporation you creates problems 
Now, these when not observing maxims are going again a very more important style. Then, when you are not observing maximum, then what happens? One answer is that implicatures. Now, what is implicature? Let me tell you the brief orientation and of this phenomenon. If you read the slide, by observing the com cooperative principle, uh, the interlocutors are able to work out what is meant from what is said. I mean, when you say something, uh, then uh, then I uh, then according to the cooperative principles, I assume what I what I should say in response. And then, but actually, what happens that utterances they do not always carry their internal meaning. Mean, I mean, maybe you are asking something, but I'm not getting the meaning. Maybe I'm not aware of the context. So, so your utterance won't be clear to me. You, you want, uh, because I'm getting you the meaning of your utterance from the internal words. But you mean you intend something different. I'm not getting your intention. So this would create a problem. Another problem can be the non-literal meaning must be inferred from context and the cooperative principle. But again, uh, usually this uh, this thing is not happening. So non now what we do that when we are not getting the meaning of your utterance from the literal meanings, I get the meaning from non-literal interpretations. Mean I interpret it. And that non-literal interpretations are referred to as implicatures. Mean whatever you are asking, whatever you are saying, the meaning of that sent uh, uh, meaning of that sentence, I cannot get from the actual utterance, from the actual words which are composing your utterance. So the meanings are not clear from the internal meanings of the words. So I have to make the non-literal meaning. I have to infer. I have to assume. I have to get them, and these non-literal interpretations are implicatures. It is a special type of inference in which the bearer makes the assumption that the speaker is not breaking one of the conversational maxims of quantity, quality, relation, and manner. I mean, we in our real life we assume. That you follow these uh, maxims of cooperation, these uh, these fall because this is this is my assumption that uh, okay whenever I am I am talking to you whatever uh, now what happens and to make it more clear that what happens I say I ask you something and as a result you answer me something now your answer is not directly related to 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 answer me not directly related to what I am asking but still within the context. Your utterances is giving me a meaning because I assume that you are following the cooperation principles. That I assume that you are telling me the right information. So this way, what happens that when not we do not observe maxims, we get implicatures. We we get the non-literal meanings. We interpret what you are saying. Again, there is another theory that when we do not observe maxims, again we have a phase theory. Now, before telling you what phase theory is, let's see what what when, why why what happens when we do not observe the maxims or the cooperation maxim. In ex in order to explain why, in many cases, people expect express the themselves implicitly and indirectly by flouting their four maxims of the uh, cooperative principle brown and levinson 1978 observed the phase theory they proposed the the phase theory and 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 and, uh, and before that phase theory the leech i mean after i mean uh, 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 that with this phase theory the leech was the person who developed the phase theory further and formulated the politeness principle that what happens when i do not face uh, um, maxims uh, four maxims of cooperation but i assuming them but i i assume that i do are following them so this is this is this was the base of our phase theory the phase theory was actually proposed by levinson and was extended by leech in the form of politeness theory now what is the phase theory according to this theory everybody has face wants you mean at the face level i wants i have certain wants
and i know mean uh, i assume that you are fulfilling the you are fulfilling those wants so these are the face wants for example the expectation concerning their public self image in order to maintain harmonious interpersonal relationship and ensure successful social interaction we should be aware of the two aspects of author's person's face that is the positive face and the negative face mean because i want to convey a good image of mine so i whatever you will suppose you will assume that whatever i will tell you is perfectly fine so that is my positive face but at the same time in in writing poem sometimes the authors they have the negative face mean they 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 are saying something but uh, maybe they, they we assume that the okay at the face level this is correct maybe the the author has experienced this but at the same time we should keep it in mind that maybe maybe it is the negative face of the author but again we we have face wants and we want them to get fulfilled while conversing with each other or while even in the written discourses we we uh, we establish certain face wants and we want the authors to fulfill those face wants and so this is this is was the theory of face wants so ending with cooperation theory we will uh, i would like to suggest that within uh, go yes the cooperation theory is very much good but still it has certain limitations because and this this limitations are oh, because of the cooperative principles what are these number 1 different cultures countries and communities have their own ways of observing and expressing maxims for particular situation mean if i accept these four maxims they could be perfectly fine with respect to english society english community but maybe in my culture in my society there is another additional maxim maybe for example if i strictly for give you a well um, give you uh, an example then with respect to pakistani society there can be another maxim can you guess what maxim of respect yes while communicating with each other maxim of respect with respect to age because we supposed to give respect to while talking to each other according to our age level if you're talking to another person you need to give more respect you need to be more polite more humble but when you usually you are talking to the little ones you are mean more free and you are no more informal so this this we we have another maxim in our society so they say we cannot say that that whatever the four maxims that were proposed by grice they find for their community but different cultures different societies different communities they can have additional maxims similarly one other another limitation of that grice uh, cooperation theory is that there is often an overlap between the four maxims it can be difficult to say which one is operating and it would be more precise to say that there are two or more operating at once mean sometimes we are uh, we are relevant and maybe when we are relevant we are also the following the maximum of quality and quantity as well so this way at i mean the maximum they are overlapping one time it is happening that only one maximum is working we suppose one maximum is working but and actually the two three maximums are working so these maximum the overlap after the cooperation theory we have the last theory of pragmatics that is argumentation theory that argumentation theory is talks about the argumentative features actually what happens that that the way when we talk or way when we say certain things we give certain logical arguments and that 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 theory according to argumentation theory it happens that usually in our debates in our negotiations what we say we try to give mutually acceptable conclusions and these mutually acceptable conclusions they are usually based on certain arguments for example i want you to to buy a red car only so i would be arguing with you about the features of red color about the um, qualities of red color or about the car about the car that which are red color what is what is their peculiarity what is their good points so this way i would be arguing with you 
and people they do argue in actual conversation it do happen that we argue we argue for example in the court the the people they argue about the matter about the trial about the uh, the murder or about the any type of crime that has happened so we need to argue we need to argue our point uh, our regarding our issues to make settlements and and this arguing is based usually on logical reasoning when i argue i need to prove my points through with the help of certain logics certain rationales i will give you certain points uh, to prove myself it only it also happens another important example is of debates you you have if a uh, debate is something different from speech in speech competition usually there is a topic and the people they come and talk about it in debate there is a centralized topic and there are two groups the group of people who talk in the favor of that topic and the group of people who talk against that topic so this is the debate and in debate two different parties they are arguing about a single topic the one party gives on his own their own logics and reasons and they argue to prove themselves correct the other party gives its own logics and reason to prove themselves uh, correct so this way in debates we can have arguments and this is not only mean in verbal form in written discourses we can also have this argumentation then the when the writer wants to uh, prove his points he gives certain arguments and uh, if you recall your knowledge we have at an important types of essays which is known as argumentative essays and that argumentative essays or that argumentative writing are purely based on the arguments arguments are uh, based on the reasonings and logics so this way this way the argumentation theory works now typically the argument has an internal structure now this the argument it is uh, it is actually constructed very systematically it has a proper structure and what this structure internal structure is comprised of that there is a set of assumptions known as premises that you assumes certain things that set of assumptions are premises and then a method of reasoning or deduction mean you want to prove that assumptions as true so you have certain reasons behind that you have a set of reasons to prove yourself right and then you have a conclusion mean you have you want you have certain assumptions you want to prove them right so you give certain conclusions so you sorry you give certain reasons and on the basis of that reasons you come up with a conclusion so this way in argumentation theory we prove our points we argue about our points and prove them as right then then uh, and uh, it is said that an argument have at least two premises and one conclusion a good argument is on usually have two assumptions and one conclusion on the basis of two assumptions we give certain reasons and then finally we come up with a conclusion so this way this way argumentation theory uh, 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 works so uh, so far we have discussed uh, the different theories in pragmatics now another important aspect of our uh, lecture that is pragmatics analysis so we'll start now with pragmatics analysis what is pragmatics analysis there are four types of pragmatics analysis that are done the first type of pragmatics analysis is that is done uh, in a relation to the situation that there is a certain situation and according to situation you you pragmatically analyze the utterances or uh, or the speech then you can analyze a speech or an utterance in relation to context then you can there is another level is that where you can analyze our um, uh, uh, speech or a conversation or an utterance in relation to the people and finally in a relation to the formation let's see how he this how these things happen how we have these types of analysis in, in with these uh, different relations first pragmatic analysis in relation to the uh, in, in in relation to the situations 
we adopt our conversations to different situations depending on the place and the time where the speech occurs mean when we analyze our speech our utterance or a conversation held at a specific place or held at a specific time then according to that situation according to that place and time factor we will analyze that speech or that part of uh, that piece of conversation for example 14th august 19 14th august year any year mean like let's in 2013 14th august 2012 lahore minto park uh, the uh, sorry any party leader is there and saying certain addressing people saying certain things so what would be the relevance what would 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 you say you will analyze his speech whatever he will say in a relation to that time and event because you will say you will overall create an impact because this day of 14th august and that location of lahore uh, minto park is very much important so you will analyze that speech in a relation to that situation in a relation to that time and place factor so this way we can have a pragmatic analysis in a relation to the situations secondly we can have pragmatic analysis in a relation to the people because in conversation it it, it is very much important that who you are the person who is speaking and the who the other people who with whom you are communicating mean the listeners the, that things are important because your relation with those people and your relations with these uh, communities these they they they, they affect the use of your words and use of your speech and the meanings to construct the meanings inside your speech so this way the speeches or the conversation they can be analyzed in relation to people for example ironic utterances with friends and with unknown people if you use ironic sentences with your friends so it depends that what kind of people uh, you, what kind of uh, man you are and what kind of friends you have so 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 according to the uh, people you make use of speeches next we have the pragmatic analysis in a relation to the context for example within the people there are choices there are different mean uh, there are different clues in the context that allow us to notice the, uh, in so many things that uh, for example if you are uh, using ironic statement then according to context i have to make it clear i have to i will get the meaning of your iron ironically ironic statements with respect to context in which you are because th maybe it happens that whatever you are saying but you meant something different mean irony is that that you say something and uh, something different but you mean something different but how i would know that you are using the iron irony definitely the context would tell me what is the context of your speech what is the context of your conversation what is the context of your utterance the context would make it to clear me make it clear to me that what um, uh, what kind of um, Uh, uh, things you are saying or how the things you are saying are meant to be different so this way for example a facial expressions is a good example you are saying uh, you are you are welcome here now you are welcome here you are saying me welcome but at the same time your facial expressions are telling me that you are not happy you are not welcoming me actually you are not happy with the, happy with my arrival so this way the facial expression they are the context of your speech they are the context of your utterance telling me what actually is if you are saying you are you are um, you are saying to me that you are welcome but your facial expressions are telling me that you are not at all welcoming me so this way the context makes the utterances makes uh, helps us to analyze the utterances and to get the meanings of utterances and finally we can have pragmatic analysis in relation to the uh, information for example presuppositions about the 
to world, I uh, mean about the world knowledge of hair is. That is meaning that can be uh, deducted by listeners because they are already know about that information. For example, if I'm telling you, I am um, devoting my whole energies to the uh, to to a dream realized by Kaidiyazam. Now, if I'm telling this statement, if I'm uttering this statement to Pakistani, to a man or to person who is Pakistani. Definitely he is going to understand because he knows, he knows the previous information part that is part over here, who Qaid Azam is, what was his dream. They, they have the knowledge, they have the already information about what I have said. But again if I, the same piece of information I am saying to a foreigner, he is now going to understand what, who was the Qaid Azam and what was his dream. So this way, you sometimes you have information, the background information, to analyze, to pragmatically analyze the tenses, conversation, and speeches to get their meaning. These these were the four most important types of pragmatic analysis. But there is a, another important type of uh, analysis that is. Not that directly does not fall into the category of discourse analysis, but it is important because uh, with the relation to pragmatics, what it is? Pragmatics and discourse analysis. Using the pragmatics knowledge, using the texts of pragmatics, using the theories of pragmatics, you can analyze discourses. So, you know, uh, if you have certain knowledge that this discourse analysis, it is nowadays a, a field of knowledge, a separate branch of knowledge, where you analyze discourses. This is the standard existing field with, uh, within linguistics. So, to analyze discourses, you use the pragmatic theories, you use the different tools which help us to understand the pragmatic utterances. So, the same tools of pragmatics, theories uh, of pragmatics are used to analyze discourses. So, this way the relationship between pragmatics and discourse analysis is very much important. Now, look at the cartoon example. What fits your busy schedule? Better exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? So, so try to understand it. What is the context? What the, what the doctor wants to tell the, uh, the, uh, the patient? Definitely he does not want him to be dead. What he is trying to say, he is trying to actually emphasizing the value of exercise for him. He is trying to tell him the other way around. So this way, this is a discourse piece and, pra and pragmatically we can understand this piece of discourse. What is meant by this? So this way for discourse analysis, pragmatics is an important area of knowledge. But how do these two work together? Let's see. Starting with what pragmatics is, the study of language usage from a functional perspective and is, I mean, this is concerned with the principles that account for how meaning is communicated by the speaker. I mean, the writer, speaker, writer can be in discourse analysis. Usually these discourses are in the form of text. So we can say that the, 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 the speaker of the discourse is the writer and interpreted by the listener. Who is the listener of the text? Definitely the reader in a certain context. Similarly, like pragmatics, text analysis is also concerned with language used in particular context. It is the linguistic analysis of naturally occurring uh, connected spoken or written text. In other words, it is the study of linguistics units larger than sentences or clauses. So if you compare what pragmatics is and what language study is, I mean discourse study is, you will see the, 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 the things are, the things they, the, they are, uh, the who fall in these two categories are almost the same. Pragmatics, studying the functional aspects of language, discourse analysis again to study 
what the writer wants to say because because the in in discourses we usually not get the meanings from the from the just from the feature what are the words used inside the piece of text we can analyze them maybe they they would give you a, a surface level meaning but to get the deep level deeper level understanding to get the deep meanings i need to analyze this discourse and i need to use the pragmatics as a tool to understand the meanings what is what is said by a speaker or a writer so this way the discourse analysis it uses pragmatics as an important tool to analyze written or a uh, verbal uh, text now discourse analysis what is its focus its focus uh, mean uh, focuses all theories uh, related to pragmatics all theories that we have discussed for so far like the speech act theory the relevance theory the cooperation theory the argumentation theory all of these theories can be used to analyze text or any single theory I mean you can analyze a piece of text with a speech act theory you can analyze a piece of text with reference to relevance theory you can analyze a piece of text with respect to argumentation theory so you can use any um, theory within pragmatics or any area of knowledge within the pragmatics to to have the analysis of the discourses but at the same time when you study discourses there are certain features that you have to take into account mean that you on the one side you are using your knowledge from the pragmatics to study uh, the different um, aspects of the knowledge within the text but at the same time there are certain other features of the written text which you need to take into account while studying it pragmatically I mean again these features they give you the pragmatic view of the uh, knowledge they give you a pragmatic view of the language used these factors are a cohesion reference um, a substitution and ellipses a conjunction theme and rhyme i have chosen few of these a few of them these are the important one but remember there are more than these there are other factors too which can which can uh, act as, as 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 to create a pragmatic me meaning in the discourse like uh, given and new that in a con that in a sentence what is the knowledge that is given and what is the knowledge that is the new one this type of i mean uh, elements can be there but i have just focused on these five the more prominent uh, aspects um, of the discourses to create a um, pragmatic meaning what is cohesion a text is not a collection of lexical items and or sentence in random instead it must be semantically unified now cohesion also means unified you uh, if a text it has a cohesion it means all the elements in the sets they are unified they create a I mean a combination they, they what we can call it uh, the phenomena of unification um, I mean uh, uh, united united we stand divided we fall so this way united the text we can get we can have more better understanding so the text is not a random piece of utterances it is actually a uniform unified form in other words it must have texture that is the property that distinguishes a text from a non text if there is no cohesion usually the unification makes a text if i ask you to write a paragraph on a certain topic your whole paragraph would be about that topic so there is a unification if i am telling you a topic and you are talking about so many things within that paragraph your your so your text is non text it is not at all a good text because it is not unified so this way unification or cohesion gives makes the text a good text your unity of text can be achieved by a number of semantic and lexico grammatical means among with them the most important is cohesion again cohesion means creating unity within the text then we have reference reference refers to the semantic relations in which a word or words are used to enable the addressee to identify someone or something the word or words used for reference are called the reference items for example the persons or the thing the, that who to whom your utterances are referring 
to to whom this text is referring to if your text is unified it would be referring to one thing or if, if this is a long piece of text then different paragraphs would be referring to different ideas would be referring to different uh, themes would be referring to different events so this be the text it refers to something to maybe it is referring to certain peoples or it is refers to certain events or it refers to certain things so the referential element is always there it is of a specific nature of information that is signaled for uh, retrieval the information to be retrieved is the referential meaning for example john has moved to a new house he had it built last year now referential information is that he because he had built it last year what he had built the house to which he has moved so again this it is referring he had it built now it is referring to the previous information that is the house so this is reference then we have substitution and ellipses substitution refers to the replacement of one item by another item and ellipses is the omission of an item mean some time to create cohesion uh, in a unification in the text to 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 get the meaning to get uh, the understanding of the text or to create the meaningfulness in the text you add certain items or you delete certain item if you add something you are a substitution if you are omitting certain thing then that is ellipses for example i ate two eggs eggs and a cup of milk for my breakfast okay if i cut it all i can say i ate the breakfast mean person a is saying but i ate these 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 things and the person b is saying i ate the same it means he is mean giving the he is omitting certain items but at the same time the same word is a replacement of all these items whatever he is omitting what so we have to get the understanding we have to get the pragmatic nature uh, understanding of the uh, these two sentences that the same in uh, that is there in the dialogue of person b is referring to all those items which are mentioned by mean uh, the person a person b is omitting them but at the same time the word same is is uh, substituting those all those items so this way we can substitute and we can ellipse uh, information inside the text then we have conjunction usually the idea conju of conjunction start for the conjunction that are in their grammars what are conjunction conjunctions are joining words like and if but these things the words that join two sentences or phrases or words similarly in conjunction the use of conjunctions create a unity inside the text they actually join things so this way the text they 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 are joined together to create certain meanings me and these this joining is not only an inter word or inter clause level but they it can be intra clausal and intra word level that beyond any level they can we can we can uh, uh, add some things we can uh, combine certain piece of informations for example uh, john moved to the new house he had built it last year now these two words are existing these two sentences are existing together because they are relevant and we can join them with the help of and but if i am adding something new inside the and that is not relevant to part a and part b uh, c as well so then this way there would be no conjunction element so conjunction element is actually the joining feature then we have the theme and rhyme theme is about whom what is something said and rhyme is what is being said my parents gave me a new bicycle now my parents gave me the people the subject and the objects the direct object that is the theme and what did they gave me what did they give me they gave me a bicycle so bicycle is my rhyme the singer composed a new song the singer theme composed a new song rhyme so this this is what is theme and rhyme inside the sentences and if we define them properly theme can be defined as the element which serves as the point of departure of the message conveyed 
by the claws. It is the ground from which the claws is taking off. In English, this element always takes the first position of a clause. The remaining part of the passage, the part in which the theme is developed, is called the ream. Example, my parents gave me. This is the this is uh, this is the beginning part of the information. But I am departing off towards the other part of information. What did they give me? They gave me a bicycle. So that is the ream. The singer composed the new song. The singer theme. Composed the new sing re. The boys played tennis. The boys theme played tennis re. So the beginning part of your definitely usually the sentences they are themes, and the later part they are usually the re. The remaining part of the message. So what we have done today, pragmatics. Yes, we started in our previous lecture what pragmatics is. We talked about different theories. In first lecture, we were finished with speech act theory. But today's lecture, we focused on the remaining three theories. That was the cooperation theory, the relevance theory, and the argumentation theory. That what these theories, uh, how do they talk about the uh, the um, the pragmatic nature of utterances and uh, conversations um, like cooperation principles they, they they state four maxims of cooperation that uh, that we need to follow in order to have the good uh, uh, to follow the cooperation principle inside conversation then the relevance theory talks about the relevance of meanings and the argumentation theory talks about the uh, argumentative types of text where we argue things uh, you know, with with the help of logics and uh, reasons after that we talked about certain uh, pragmatic analysis procedures in relation to uh, the context uh, situation uh, people and um, and I mean another item was uh, their people situation context and information so how we can do pragmatic analysis in relation to these things and finally we talked about pragmatics and discourse analysis how the study of pragmatics it is half full to analyze discourses what how we can uh, because usually in discourses that the meanings are not clear cut the meanings are not conveyed through the direct and um, the direct internal words rather we have to make meanings rather we need to understand the meanings of text and such in at in such situations the pragmatics helps you to understand the text it helps you to to dis analyze discourses at deeper level to get more understanding of it and then we talked about certain areas where where the text they are composed of to create a pragmatic meaning like cohesion theme and dream and about the reference how these items they can help you to understand the text with the help of pragmatics so to conclude i would like to say that pragmatics is an important factor when it comes to understanding the language in a deeply way as words do not have meanings by themselves most of the times we do not understand from the words actually we understand with the help of context we have understand with the help of different types of context and this is the field where pragmatics comes into action to help us to assist us to reach to understand the real meanings of utterances speeches and discourses that was all about pragmatics so uh, see you next week uh, then we will start with something new i i have planned to mean uh, revise all the levels of language in a way that you we can have a brief uh, reintroduction or um, a recap of all the levels that we have uh, studied individually in previous last uh, i think 10 12 lectures uh, or more than that we focus them but now we will combine in our, uh, one lecture and another language we will take talk about certain practical analysis of languages which uh, according to these uh, levels so see you next week inshallah allah hafiz